we look at social and economic influence of Christian Muslim encounters in Kenya. Now, a study that culminated into what we are having today revealed that social influence uh, of Christian Muslim encounter in Kenya has its in has its share on the relations between the two faiths. Socially, Christians and Muslims work together in a number of occasions as they offer compassionate activities. For instance, during the 2007 and 8 post erection violence PEV in Kenya, Christians and Muslims provided food and other items to the Nairobi residents, irrespective of their religious background. Now, social support influences Christian Muslim relations such that people are able to provide physical needs uh, to the affected. Now, you can start by commenting even before we go on and see there's something that connotes a dialogue of purpose. You know, dialogue is not just talking. Eh? Even what we are doing is one entity, one monolithic, one monolithic entity. It is a sign that we are dialoguing, we are talking to one another, rather than talking at each other. Talking at each other, we remind ourselves things that are not present, that are not building us up, building our self-esteem. But if we can tackle common challenges like providing for post-erection violence uh, victims or this uh, internally displaced person, as we noted, or xenophobic victims, if we are in a context like South Africa, that is for both Muslim Christians and across uh, the denominational and religious divines, that, in my view, is also a form of dialogue. In light of social influence, let me add that, in interfaith dialogue, let me add that, during the post-erection violence, even churches extended their financial support to Muslims. You can see another form of reciprocity. In that spirit, there is need to develop a more concrete relationship between Christians and Muslims. Now, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, uh, that is KNBS, reported in 2013 that from 2005 to 2013, the Kenya inflation rate averaged 11.4, um, 11.84 to 31.50 or that one and a half percent in May of 2008, and a record row of 3.18% 3, 3 in October 2020. That is inflation now. Because of inflation, Kenyans find themselves uh, struggling economically. They find themselves uh, uh, in, a, in a very tight corner, uh, while others are jobless or live on meager resources. Due to economic hardships, some youth in East Ray have opted to join terror groups and the pirates in the hope of attracting financial gains. You know of Somali-based Oshabab has turned out to be the recruiting agents for some Muslim Kenyan youths. For instance, Operation, the Operation Lidanchi, it started on 12th, 12th of October 2011, when the, and it was carried out by the Kenya Defense Army. Actually, it should be Kenya Defense Forces in Somalia. Even now, they are still there, 2021, 10 years after. Now, series of kidnappings by Oshabab militia in northern Kenya, Lamu, and the Dab refugee camp led to its launch. Uh, it is made Kenya to send its forces to Somalia and fight uh, the kidnappers, the people who are assumed to be from that end. The KDF gave amnesty to the Kenyan youth recruits to Oshabab who would surrender. Some of the youths hidden to the call and returned home, inclusive of some Christian youth. This shows that financial instability affects, to a certain degree, 
uh, the relationship between Christian and Muslim in history and other parts of the country. Some youths who are joined Muslim militant groups perpetrated religious intolerable uh, to interfaith dialogue. Religious activities are in, that are intolerable to the interfaith dialogue. So both Muslims and Christians should create ways to assist the jobless youth who apparently are propagating religious intolerance or are vulnerable to recruitment by terror groups or terrorist groups locally and globally. So interfaith forums can be instrumental in this exercise. In trying to work out a summary for the day with only uh, four minutes remaining, I should, we should argue that the whole uh, topic be, as focused, that began last week, focused on the historical perspective of Christian-Muslim dialogue. And it has discussed several themes in relation to interfaith dialogue. It has attempted to respond to ancient attempts and challenges that foreshadowed the formation of constructive interfaith dialogue during Prophet Muhammad's time. It has advanced the notion that Prophet Muhammad supported Christian-Muslim relations in its formation. The rightly guided caliphs and their version of interfaith relations, sometimes characterized by religious tolerance, other times severe persecution to once Christians prevailed. We talked about the Umayyad and Ambassad dynasties, which had uh, who had their share of interfaith relationship with Christians. To some degree, Muslims treated Christians in a dignified manner. There are times when they mistreated Christians. Going to an extent of confiscating and rooting churches. Now, Christian and Muslim relationship appeared to deteriorate during the colonial and post-colonial times. That is what we have, we have noted so far. And this is because the Portuguese and British appeared to favor Christianity. Now, we went on to say that the French colonialists in the Arab countries seemed to maliciously deal with Muslims. Such scenarios left a widened gap between the Christians and the Muslims. Now, something else, Islamic jihads over the years have adversely influenced the Muslim-Christian relationship. Now, we have trained in this uh, long lecture uh, 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 this aspect, basing the argument on ancient Arabia and Africa in general, drawing its negative impulse to one's interfaith relations. Even when Umayyad swept North Africa and swept the Christianity in Egypt, Tunisia, um, Algeria, where the likes of St. Augustine were some of the early top North African theologians. The discussion has examined jihadism, Islamic radicalism in West Africa, East Africa, and Kenya. These countries have acted as a breeding ground for terrorist activities. Now, fundamental Muslims in Africa and their terrorist activities make interfaith dialogue an uphill task, an uphill task, especially when Kenya Muslims seem to support them. We have also discussed, if you can remember, medieval crusades vis-a-vis -vis Christian Muslim dialogue. The crusaders were defense and revenge mission to once what the Muslim communities thought to have had meted out against the Christians in Arabia. The crusaders, led by Pope Amban II, uh, invaded several parts of Arabia and Africa, North Africa in particular. And these crusaders, the great crusades by the Pope, when he, he led an onslaught on Muslim in 1095, these crusades had a lasting impact on scholarship, commerce, civilization, intellectual awakening, and liturgical development, but very little positive contribution on interfaith relations. Uh, to, uh, we have also outlined trends of Christian Muslim encounter in Africa. We are focused on joint societal action and their role in interfaith relations. And in most times, where there are matters affecting Muslims and Christians, the two corporately respond to the challenge. The article or the whole uh, 
lecture has attended to Portuguese Christian and Muslim along the coast and their involvement in straining Christian Muslim relationship. The teaching of Nusi supported interfaith dialogue as a way forward in achieving constructive relationship between the two faiths. Contemporary trends in Christian Muslim relations in Africa encourage people to forget past and look forward to matters that build interfaith relations. This idea has found adherence from Christians and Muslims interactions. So political, social, and economic causes could best propagate interfaith dialogue. Finally, Christian-Muslim dialogue dates back to Prophet Muhammad. Some worrying, worrying issues such as jihads adversely affected interfaith dialogue. However, there are also lessons to inform Christian-Muslim dialogue. For instance, medieval crusades may have impacted Christian uh, medieval crusades may have impaired Christian Muslim dialogue. However, interfaith dialogue should progress without trying to justify or not justify those crusades or jihads. And that is a way to get our healing. Our healing portion will come, not reminding ourselves about fast uh, conflict and differences and the fights we have had together. That is not going to build the Christian Muslim dialogue, but to move forward. Of course, you cannot ignore history because history makes us know the future, but it has to be done with prudence. Now, finally, Christians and Muslims can proceed in redressing factors that favor interfaith dialogue in the 21st century. Thank you very much. Any quick comment because time is over?